Come in, citizen. Martin McFly, age 18, resident of Sector L, Father George, Mother Lorraine, president of the Junior Brown Brigade, recipient of a full-ride scholarship to Strickland College, winner of the Courthouse Challenge Deportment Award, zero demerits until this morning. The obvious question, Mr. McFly, is... What happened to you? Jesus Christ, Doc, what happened to you? Doc. Interesting. You regard me as a doctor, indicating awareness that you're suffering from some variety of mental disorder. That's a hopeful sign, Martin. Of course, I'm not actually a doctor, but I do have the tools to turn you around and put you back on the road to societal normalization. Shall we begin with a few questions to establish a baseline? Whatever. Let's get through this nonsense so I can set you straight. You'll set me straight? Explain? Yes! What you've turned into, it's all wrong! You're supposed to be a scientist, an inventor! You created the flux capacitor, and, and we went on all these crazy adventures in time, and your hair! You don't look good, Doc. I know this is gonna be hard for you to swallow, Doc, but I'm not from around here. I'm from a different timeline, where Hill Valley isn't all screwed up, and there aren't these crazy rules, and, and my dad's not a snoop, and my mom's not a drunk, and, and you're my best friend in the whole space-time continuum! An old fogey like me? Your best friend? Yes! And Doc, I need you to get me back there. So you believe this interview is really more about me than you? Yes! You went to all this trouble just to deliver a message to me in person? Yes! A cry for help, as it were. Yes! No, wait. Tell me, Mark. Is your mother on the sauce again? Not where I come from. When I left here, both my parents were happy and well-adjusted. Okay, they didn't start out that way, but that's where your time machine comes in. Time machine? Yeah, Doc, listen to me. You don't remember it, but you built a time machine out of a DeLorean. Why? Oh, well, just for the hell of it, I guess. Plus, the steel frame of the DeLorean... dispersal, I don't know. It was important for some reason. Fascinating. Yes, it is fascinating. It's it's amazing. It's incredible. But you don't know it because you've never invented it. You're not the real Doc Brown. You gotta believe me. And this is because? Everything got screwed up when I went back in time to 1931. Sounds like this time machine is a very practical and dangerous invention. Yes, I, I mean, no. What I mean is it's messed up a lot of things, but first, it made a lot of things better. Uh, like my mom and my dad. It was only thanks to your time machine that they ever became successful and happy. So they're happy. But they're not, because you summoned me back in time and somehow your timeline got messed up and everybody else is along with it. I see. No, you don't. Think, think back. Don't you remember me? We knew each other when you were 18. I'm Michael Corleone. Incredible. This case is more serious than I'd imagined. The boy has fabricated an alternate reality. No, this is the alternate reality. My reality is the real reality. Calm down, Martin. I'm not blaming you for anything. The failure is ours, not yours. Obviously, there was a drastic flaw in your social conditioning. Yeah, I don't understand. No, I don't understand you. But I want to. I want to get at the root of your problem. Keep talking. Ah. Uh, Take your time. Look around the room. Perhaps something here will stimulate your map. Your memory. Something about that clock looks familiar. I can't tell if it's a guy celebrating a touchdown or chained up in a gulag. Glass half full, Marty. Half full. It's all the same stuff I saw on my dad's monitors. I think. The whole town is under surveillance. So that's what Judge Brown looked like. I never actually saw him. Of course not. He died before you were born. He was my biggest supporter. After my wife, of course. That's a switch. Last time I saw your younger self, you and your dad had just had a big falling out over your decision to become an inventor instead of a lawyer. Isn't that right? Uh... Impressively detailed illusion. Keep talking. Wow, that is...
cool. The sound, it... Yeah, it's kind of lulling. Uh, right, wait, what was I doing? Okay, take a look at this picture of Einstein here. The dog? Harboring dangerous animals is a municipal offense. Yeah, yeah, they told me, but you harbored this very same animal once, a long time ago. Remember the test run of your rocket car? Einstein landed on the roof of the courthouse. I do, I, I do recall something of the sort, but naturally it couldn't have been the same dog. There wasn't anything natural about it. Einstein's a time traveler too, thanks to your invention. I, uh, bizarre fantasy life. Go on, proceed. You still got the movie ticket. Indeed I do. The memento of my first date with Edna. I took her to see the virtuous husband. And you never saw Frankenstein. You were supposed to go see Frankenstein that night. It was going to give you the inspiration you needed to pull off your big demonstration at the Hill Valley Expo. Inspired by Frankenstein? How whimsical. Not to mention historically inaccurate. My darling wife was all the scientific news I've ever needed. From my successful demonstration at the 31 Expo all the way up to my cutting edge Citizen Plus program. Successful? It was supposed to be a failure. Jeez, Doc sure has a lot of files. I don't have time to go through those. I'll just focus on what's out on display. Check this out, Doc. It's all your notes about the flux capacitor, your greatest invention. That can't be my notebook. The handwriting is far too sloppy. See this picture? In the other timeline, I've got a girlfriend who loves me. Interesting. The subject's fantasy life also includes an imaginary girlfriend. What? Oh, great. The timeline's catching up with me. See, this is my father back when he was a teenager. With your time machine, I went back to 1955 and helped him stand up to Biff. Interesting. Of course, Mr. Tannen spent most of 1955 in our juvenile rehabilitation facility, learning to control his anger. He did? No wonder my dad's still so... lame. Maybe this song will remind you of something. Tell me, Doctor, where are we going this time? Yes, it does. It reminds me why we banned rock and roll. Hey, this is your fish tank. Yes, that is my fish tank. It looks much better without all the bacteria. What? And then just had it cleaned. Yeah, but in 1931 it was full of bacteria that we used to make rocket fuel. Remember? Stop trying to confuse me! My whole life has been dedicated to the practical use of technology to shape a more efficient, orderly society. Ask anyone. It's a fact. I'll look it up. You know better, right, Emmett? I... I... wrong. Do you see this picture? I keep it close by me to remind me of the moment when my life's course became clear. August 25th, 1931. The day I single-handedly captured Kitana. The scourge of Hill Valley. Single-handedly? And not incidentally the day I caught the eye of Edna Strickland. My scientific muse and the love of my life. Take a look. What you see there is a young man who understands his destiny. That's not what I see. What do you see? Wow, I never noticed this before, but Edna definitely had the hots for you, didn't she? Hots, yes. Edna was the first member of the fair sex to see something special in me. She saw something, all right, and she ran with it. Remember him? Arthur McFly. Your grandfather, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you and I served a subpoena to him back in 31. Preposterous. Hmm. Looks to me like a kid who's all psyched about his new invention. That's where you're wrong. Although my rocket car had accidentally captured Kid Tannen, it was also a widely impractical and dangerous idea that would have triggered unimaginable consequences had I pursued it further. Luckily, Edna came along and channeled my newfound fame into more practical pursuits. I'm almost sorry we put Kid Tannen away. We? Yeah, come on, don't you remember? You disarmed him and I trapped him in the rocket car. No, that's not how it happened. Could that be? I think it is. What? It's me, and you, the other you. 
It is me! And you! But how? Michael? It's impossible! No, it's science. Your science, Doc. In this other world, the one you say you come from, am I... am I happy there? Very happy. You've got two great sons. Sons? Yes, and a fantastic wife. Not Edna? Not even remotely. And your invention. Jeez, Doc, you can go anywhere you want to. Anywhere in time. You're the luckiest guy in the universe. And what about Hill Valley? Hill Valley? You know it's got problems. A little bit of urban decay here, a little bit of crime there. It's a normal city. People are happy, mostly. And even when they're miserable, they're not miserable like they are in your Hill Valley. Stop! There are no miserable people in my Hill Valley. Give me a break. You don't really believe... My citizens lead lives of order and peace. Nobody worries. Nobody complains. Only because they're afraid to. Jeez, open your eyes, will you? You and Hedna have got them all terrorized. That's Mrs. Rao to you, Sonny. Doc. Kindly address me as your honor. We worked for over 50 years, my wife and I. Every waking moment devoted to Riddy Hill Valley of vice and disorder. And you dare to claim that our citizens are unhappy? Yeah, yeah, I, I do. I've seen it. They're just too afraid to speak up. Afraid? Afraid of what? Afraid of the consequences of their actions, Doc. You run this place like it's a police state. Nonsense. I can prove it. All right then, time travel boy. You do that. And until you do, I'm going to treat your wild story as just that. A story told by a madman. And I've determined that the best treatment is simply to let the insanity run its course. So, is the interview over? Should I leave? Please do. I'm very busy. I've got a city to run. Fine, but I'll be back with proof.